started. So we started this, this message of salvation yesterday, and so we're going to finish it up today. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is a blast from the past. Like I said, you know, probably nothing nobody already know, but maybe it's not for us. Maybe it's for someone out in, in uh, Never Ever Land on the Internet or something. I don't know. Hallelujah. All right, so we we started yesterday and we were talking about the wide gate and the broad way that leads to destruction. I mean, and we uh, went over the Romans road to salvation and we determined that it was one of the proponents that leads people through the wide gate and onto that broad way that leads unto destruction. And we went through that and. We we actually uh, we actually uh, came came by way of uh, um, up to the point to where we were about to talk about the wide gate and the broad way even have their own gospel and so Second Kephas two one through three and Second Kephas twelve through 15 speaks about um, what this gospel concerns itself with. It says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies and even denying the Adonai that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through Covetousness, they shall be famed with words. They will feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. You know, so here it is. They have there was some false prophets. They came in amongst the people. They began to speak of this, even this other gospel, if you would, and they begin to make market of the brethren. You know, it continues in verse 12, and it says, But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things they understand not, and shall utterly, utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of the unrighteous as they that count in pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while, feast, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And so this is what we have today. We have uh, a lot of folks that's leading people through the wide gate onto the broad way of destruction. Uh, Apostle Paul also spoke of this in, in Galatians and he spoke of those who, you know, purport um, uh, even another gospel he called it you know and so there is another gospel that's prevalent today and it's called the prosperity gospel you know and, and, and within this prosperity gospel people do and you know the, its leaders do just as the scriptures we just read dictate you know they make market of the brethren you know they truly make market of the brethren you know, if we just take a look at, at some of them, you know, it's not hard to see, you know. They're full of rich preachers and rich churches, but poor saints. And it's even because they fleece the sheep. You know, um, I don't forgot the names of these, these folks, but... They're supposed to be pretty famous, you know. Uh, no, that's not Benny Hinn. I, I know, I know Benny Hinn, but that's not. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's his brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Founders of TBN. Oh, the founders of TBN. Okay. Oh, the founders of TBN. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is what they live in. Yeah, you know, they make a market or something, you know, or someone, you know, but uh, they're living quite lavishly. 
I think um is this the couple that have um I think they have like a hundred thousand dollar mobile home for their dog. That's the bakers. Oh, where they're coming up. Um, here's a familiar face. You know. Yeah, this is Joe Osteen. I, I know Smiley, you know. And, you know, Smiley's living quite lavishly, you know. And I'm not, you know, I'm not against anyone living lavishly. But just not at the expense of the brethren. You know, don't, don't fleece y'all sheep in order to get there, you know. That's, that's the problem that I have. You know, this is their church. This is his church, Joe's Osteen's church. It only holds 17,000 people. You know, yeah. Now you, you can see why, how he can live like that. You know, you just fleece a little, fleece, fleece uh, 17,000 people each week and you know, you can live like this too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you imagine what their what their thousand dollar line looked like? Now, here's another well well known um, proponent of the prosperity gospel. This is uh, you know Creflo Dollar. He's aptly named. You know, <laughs> very, very, very befitting of of the gospel he preached. You know, Mr. Dollar, Dollar Dollar Bill, y'all. You know, and he don't want, he didn't want any neighbors, as you can see. You know, he didn't want any neighbors. Yeah, you know. Now here's just a you know. A Christ Lutheran church, you know, just a com common everyday church. But they're on their way. They're, they're, they're on their way. You know, they're fleecing the sheep. They they put the ATM right outside the door. You know, right outside the door. Don't even, oh, you don't have no change. Don't worry about it. You forgot, oh, yeah, we take cash and we take credit and debit, you know, right outside. You, you know, there's the ATM. Half at it, you know. Now, uh, this church, you know, they they want to throw the guilt trip at you. Will a man rob God? <laughs> and found in Malachi three eight, they put their non tithers on the board. They have a non tither board. Are you serious right now? Wow. You know, I guess this this is the board of shame. Or is it just the board of those who are broke, you know, or the board of the poor that just can't afford it? You know, yeah, that's, that's horrible. You know, Jude 1, 11, 12 says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and reigned greedily after the era of Balaam for reward. And this is why they do what they do, for reward. It says they ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gang saying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose wither, whose fruit withereth without fruit. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Twice dead. Meaning they're going to die, then they're going to die again. The second death which is the lake of fire, right? Anybody remember that from yesterday? Mm -hmm. You know, and then within the churches, there's all types of paganism right up in the church. You know, none of these things should be up in the church. Not only in the church, but on the church. <laughs> you know, this is a figurine that's actually on the church. Now, I don't know. It has wings, but it doesn't look like an angel to me. And if it is, I don't want to see that one. <laughs> you know, how about this guy? 
that's a pretty graphic, you know, image to put on a church. You know, and uh, who's the little demonic animal? Who is he biting? I just wonder. Now this is actually on an ancient church. You know, this was be this was made before the movie. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's the Gremlin. I don't know if you ever. I know that was a while ago, but it was a movie called The Gremlins. You know, and this is exactly what they look like. You know, and this way predates that movie. And in the movie, they're constantly eating. Now you know where they got the idea for the movie from. You see the drumstick in his hand? Yeah. You know, Yermi Yahu 10, 1 through 6 says, Hear ye the word which Yahuwah speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahuwah, learn not. Learn not. Learn not. Learn not the way of the heathen. But what did Yah's people do? They ran and learned it anyway. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cut of a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it moveth not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Yahuwah, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Now, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this is a Christmas tree that's being described here. This is what we would call a Christmas tree today. You know, and so many people just casually just gloss over this. Or but a lot of people don't read the word either, so they may not even see it. But, you know, take note. It says that they must need to be born because they cannot go. You know, they can't move on their own. Now here's the, 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 the really the kicker. It says, be not afraid of them. Why would scripture say, be not afraid of them, except there were those that were afraid of them? You know, so obviously, you know, what we have today is a watered down version of what they had in times past. Because this implies that they were undoubtedly afraid of them at some point. Hence, it's telling them not to be afraid of them. You know, no one would say that today to, to no one with a Christmas tree. Because no one with a Christmas tree are, are, are afraid of their tree. See, but this is showing you where the origins lied. They were considered gods. You know, images of gods. And so people were afraid of them. You know, they did think that they could do evil. You know, and so this is why they were afraid and this is why, you know, they did the practices that was, that was um, purported to them. You know, but we know that there's none like Yahuwah, you know, who's great and his name is great and might. You know, we don't have to worry about any lesser gods. We serve the most high God. Amen. This is tragic. You know, this should never be found within the house of Yahuwah Elohim. Now, you find it in Bethel all the time. You find it in the house of God. But you won't never find it in the house of Yahuwah. <coughs> Say la. Judges 3, 5 through 7. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahuwah and forgot Yahuwah their Elohim and served Balaam and the grove. This word goat groves is Asherah from Astarte, uh, meaning the goddess of war, the goddess of love, the goddess of fortune and happiness, known as Ishtar. 
to the Greeks and Mesopotamians. This is where we get Easter. This is a picture of Ishtar, an image rather, of Ishtar and her mascot. Now you see where the Easter bunny comes from. She was a fertility goddess. Bunnies are known for their great fertility, you know, for being quick as a bunny, as they say. This is pagan practices that they've brought right into, I'll say Bethel, the house of God. But you'll never find these things in Yah's house. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. And even as Jews said, the, the fruits are rotten. The tree is withered up. You know, so, there's a lot of people that think they're saved, but are actually lost. You know, so, we've learned what wasn't the way. To salvation. So now we're going to talk about <laughs> salvation in the other way. So we talked about the broad way. We determined that it was two gates and two ways, you know, and we went up the wide gate first. That led us unto destruction. Okay, we're, we're at the end of that. Now we're going to go the narrow, through the narrow gate and the uh, straight gate and the narrow way that lead us unto life over here. You know, over here in the kingdom of Elohim, New Jerusalem, my man. Alright, so, broad or narrow? We're going to take the narrow this time. Took the broad last time, it got us nowhere but destroyed, so we're going to take the narrow path. The narrow path is through scripture. Scripture is the straight gate and the narrow way that leadeth unto life. This is the way you want to go. Many of those things that we we saw and we heard of and we talked about that, that was um, found on the Broadway after entering through the wide gate weren't even found in scripture. You know, scripture didn't dictate those things. You know, if anything, scripture forbade those things as we saw with the Christmas tree. Matthew Yahoo 7, 13 through 23, you know, as a reminder of where we got these gates from. You know, it's even a teaching that Yahshua taught. Let me have my first reader read Matthew Yahoo 7, 13 through 23, please. Enter ye in the end the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there will be that which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that will find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Adonai, Adonai, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Hallelujah. And again, I want to I want to uh, point out that these these folks that screaming out, Lord, Lord. Look at what they're doing. They're prophesying in his name. You know, so what type of people prophesy in the name of, uh, of 
of um, our Adonai. You know, they're casting out devils in his name. They're doing many wonderful works in his name. Can't you see that this is the clergy? Can't you see that these are the leaders, you know, that are doing these things and leading people astray, thinking that they're going to enter in, but they won't. And neither will any of those that follow them that continue to work in equity. Now, Luke 13, 24 through 29 tells us to strive to enter in at the straight gate. Now, hold on. Wait a minute. Verse 14 of Matthew Yahoo 7, verse 13 said, enter in at the straight gate. But verse 14 says, there's only a few there be that find the gate. Did you catch that? It's only a few that find it. Now, when I think about that, that's just that just boggles my mind because it's like over 2.5 billion people, that's what a B, that proclaim to be Christians today. Does that sound like the way of the few or the way of the many? Undoubtedly the many, right? We're talking about a third of the population of the planet. Proclaim to be Christians. That can't be the straight gate in the narrow way because only a few find it. And that's not a few by anyone's standards. Not anyone's. Now, when we take this passage, Matthew 7, 13, 23, and we add it with Luke 13, 24 through 29, specifically verse 24 where it tells us to strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Okay, now let's dissect this for a moment. First of all, it's only a few that find it. Now, many are the ones that find it won't be able to enter into it. That number getting really small. Can you see that? Can you see that? You know, only a few find it, and out of the ones that find it, many of them won't be able to enter into it. Because they're not going to strive. What does strive mean? It means to wrestle. It means to struggle. It means to fight. Are you willing to fight your way through? Verse 25 goes on to say, When once the master of the house is risen up and have shut the door, and he began to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham and Yisak and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of Elohim and you yourselves thrust out and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of Elohim. You can't be workers of iniquity and get in. Can you see that? Then we have Yeshayahu 11, 11 through 16. My next reader, please. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Adonai shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Israim and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. And gather together the dispersed of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. They envy also the em, the envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Yehuda shall be cut off. <laughs> Ephraim shall not envy Yehuda, and Yehuda shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hands upon. Edom and Moab, 
and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And Yahuwah shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shed. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria like as it was in Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Mizraim. Hallelujah. So here it is. Um, yes, Yahoo prophesied a, a, a remnant of his people, you know, uh, which shall be left from Assyria. Now, Assyria means to be straight. You know, uh, it's from this root is a shower, which means to be straight. You know, and so what's being t spoken of is this highway, this straight highway that's for the remnant of his people. And so this is the way of Yahuwah. That straight highway. That's that you have to go through that straight gate. In that narrow way, that narrow way is that highway they were speaking of, and there it, there will be a remnant of Israel that will be saved, and a whole lot of Gentiles. You know, Genesis six twelve says, "And Elohim looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth." Now, the point that I'm making throughout these passages is that Yah has a way. He has a way. It's a straight way. It's a narrow way. But this just goes by most would-be believers. They don't realize he has a way so they don't look for his way. But it's spoken of all through scripture. You know, even here in Genesis 6, it's speaking about flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So there's Yah's way upon the earth and there's man's way that's upon the earth. Man's way is the way through the wide gate that goes on the broad way that leadeth unto destruction. Yah's way is the way through the straight gate that is scripture and the narrow way which is through scripture and you know the straight gate which is actually Yahshua and the narrow way which is um, scripture which ultimately is Yahshua as well you know, uh, upon the earth. You know, so two different ways. Genesis 18, 7 through, 17 through 19 also bear witness. It says, And Yahuwah says, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of Yahuwah to do righteousness and right ruling. That Yahuwah may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So you see, there is a way of Yahuwah that goes all the way back. You know, and that's the way we want to travel. Judges 2.22, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of Yahuwah to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it or not. This is the very same way that we're to travel. 2 Kings 21, 22, And he forsook Yahuwah Elohim of his fathers and walked not in the way of Yahuwah. But you ask most people, what's the way of Yah? They look at you like you're crazy. What are you talking about? What way? Proverbs 10, 29, The way of Yahuwah is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Isn't that what Yahshua said? Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. Or wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth um, unto destruction. And those are the workers of iniquity. Yes, Yahoo 40, verse 3, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahuwah. Make straight in the desert a highway for our Elohim. So, the way of Yahuwah 
is straight for one. And for two, where is it at? The word. That's what it is. But where is it at? In the desert, in the wilderness, absolutely. It's in the wilderness. You know, you have to travel Yah's way through the wilderness. This is why when you look at Abraham, he's traveling through the wilderness. You look at Esau, he's traveling through the wilderness. You look at Yaakov, he's traveling through the wilderness. You look at David, he's traveling through the wilderness. You know, this is not by happenstance that all the saints are traveling through the wilderness. Mark 10, 51 and 52, and Yahushua answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Adonai, that I might receive my sight. And Yahushua said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Yahushua in the way. And you see Yahushua was traveling the way, showing other people the way. Even because he was and is the way. Luke 9, 57 and 58. And it came to pass as they went in the way. A certain man said unto him, Adonai, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Yahushua said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the son of man have not where to lay his head. So hereby we learn that not only was Yahushua the way, but he himself also walked in the way of Yahuwah. Hence, he didn't do one thing and tell us to do another. He was not a hypocrite. He came and showed us which way we're to travel so that we might know. And that way is still the same way that the saints that preceded him walk as well as the saints that come after him should walk. You know, Matthew 22, 15 to 16, then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of Elohim in truth. They even knew about the way. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Everybody knew about the way except for the people of the day. No one's talking about the way. No one's looking for the way. Nobody's trying to travel the way. But can't you see the way was a big deal? The way of Elohim, the way of Yahuwah was and is a big deal because without it, you can't get to Elohim. You can't get to Yah. Luke 8, 4 through 8. And when much people were gathered together and were come, come to him out of every city, he spoke a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, and he that have he cried, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. Can't you see that this parable was about the way? You know, the ones that was on the wayside wasn't on the way. They were on the side of the way. They got out the way. Those that were on the rock wasn't on the way. The ones that was on the good ground was in the way. And they bear fruit a hundredfold. Consider Acts 18, 24 through 26, and a certain Yahudim, a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Adonai. Can't you see these people were very knowledgeable and adamant about the way? And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Adonai, knowing only the baptism of Yochanan. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of Elohim more perfectly or more completely. But can't you see what he was teaching was the way and what they helped him do more completely is learn of the way? Man. 
even Yahushua himself in Matthew Yahoo 419, he says, Come follow me. Why? Because in Yokanah 14, 6, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If anyone will come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So the straight gate and the narrow way is really nothing but Yahshua. You know, you have to understand that. And so if we're going to follow Yahshua, then that means we need to do what Yahshua did. If we're going to follow Yahshua into life, because Yahshua, he went into life. Even after he died, he was resurrected back into life. And that's what we want to do, right? So we have to do what he did. We have to follow him because he's the way. That said, let us consider Matthew Yahoo 3.1 and 3.13 through 15. My next reader, please. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this he that spoke by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Adonai, and make his path straight. And the same John and his remnant of camel's hair, and the leathern girdle about his loins, and with his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to Jerusalem, then went out him to Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. And they were baptized in Jordan, confessing their sins. Then cometh Yahushua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. And Yeshua answered and said to him, Suffer it to be so now, for Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Hallelujah. All right, so. Why did Yahshua say he had to fulfill all righteousness? What was he talking about? Well, yeah, of course, it's the righteousness of the Elohim or the righteousness of Yahuwah. You know, but what was the righteousness that he had to fulfill? Torah. What part of Torah? The, the written. Say again. The part. What part of the written? He came to die. All, all of the written. What was that last one? Getting baptized. Getting baptized. That's the part. That's why he was there. He was there to be baptized of Yochanan. Why did he have to be baptized of Yochanan? To fulfill our righteousness. You know, because he is the way. And he tells us to follow him. So if he didn't get baptized, then we wouldn't feel that as though it was necessary for us to get baptized because he's our example. Can you see that? He's our example. So if he didn't get baptized, then we wouldn't need to be baptized because we're supposed to be following him because he's our example. He is the way. He's the way of Yahoo. So if the way didn't do it, then we don't have to do it. Can you see that? But this is why he had to go to John. So that we would understand what we have to do. So, Yoganon, this ain't mean gift of Yah. But I want you to see what we're really being told here. So the first thing that, we're, that we learn is that Yahshua went and found a preacher in the wilderness. 
He went and found someone that was preaching in the wilderness. That that is, he found someone that wasn't on the beaten path. He found someone that wasn't in in Mitzrayim, or that wasn't in the letter of the word. That wasn't in the knowledge of the world. Someone that was in the wilderness. Someone that was in the way, because the way is where? In the wilderness. So he went and found a preacher, someone that was confessing Yah, because he was of the tribe of Yahuda, as well as praising Yah in the wilderness. Can you see that? So, Yahshua went and found a preacher that was in the wilderness, that was confessing Yah, that was praising Yah in the wilderness to be baptized by him. So, what are we to do? Exact same thing. We're to find a preacher that's in the wilderness, that's praising Yah and confessing Yah. And baptizing out there. Amen? Mm -hmm. Secondly, you know, he was preaching the gospel. So when you find this cat out in the wilderness, make certain that he's preaching the gospel. Now, after Yahshua heard the gospel, believed the gospel, he got baptized to fulfill our righteousness because this is the way of Yahuwah. This is what he had to do. This is what everyone that comes behind him have to do. Mark 16, 14 through 16 says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Can't you see this is a part of the way? This is a part of the way. This is the beginning of the way right here. This is where Yahshua started. This was where everyone else have to start. You know, it says, But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, let us also take, take note of where Yochanan was baptizing and where Yahshua went to be baptized, which is in the wilderness, which speaks to an unsettled, uncultivated region in its natural condition. You know, so it's not, it hasn't been fixed up. It hasn't been augmented. It's in its natural condition. You know, he's dealing with the original way that Yah made it. You know, that's what the wilderness is. Cities are have been they've been augmented, they've been they've been refurbished, if you would. They've been built upon, they've been shaped and formed, you know, by men. But the wilderness is just like Yah made it. You know, so first thing is to find a preacher that's preaching the gospel, you know, out in the wilderness. And praising Yah and confessing Yah out there as well as preaching the gospel. And the second thing is to believe the gospel and be baptized by him. Now, Mark 4.17 says, From that time, Yahushua began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, and Mark 4.23, I'm sorry, Matthew, Yahoo 4.17 says that, and Matthew, Yahoo 4.23 says, And Yahushua went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Please understand that the miracle signs and wonders were bearing witness to the gospel of the kingdom. You know, that was the good news. The good news was repent for the kingdom of Elohim. And this is what the miracle signs and wonders was bearing witness to, to so that the people that was hearing it would know that it was true. Mark 1, 14 and 15. Now after that, Yochanan was put in prison. Yahushua came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of Elohim and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. 
That's what we have to do. That's the next thing that we that we do after we find our preacher man. You know, then we go and we get baptized thereof. Believe the gospel and, and be baptized. You know, and then Matthew Yahoo 10, 5 through 8, these 12 Yahushua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Don't never forget the gospel. The gospel that Yahshua was preaching, the gospel that he sent his apostles out to preach, you know, the gospel that the miracle signs and wonders was bearing witness to all before Yahshua even was crucified. That gospel was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Take note that it concerned itself with the kingdom, not with the king. That came later. Now the Yahoo 10, 5 through 8, these 12 Yahoos were sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Uh, freely ye have received, freely give. Hereby we also learn that this is the very gospel y'all sent his disciples out to preach as well. This is what his disciples even preach today. You know, after Yahshua was baptized, he received Ruach HaKadosh in the form of a dove. Anybody remember that? Yeah. You know, so that's the next thing that should be on our, our agenda. We should be trying to receive the Ruach Kadesh as well. Luke 3.16, Yoganah answered, saying unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I come of the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with Ruach Kadesh and with fire. So here it is, Yoganah, the preacher in the wilderness. You know, he was even talking about this baptism of Ruach Kadesh that will come later, that will come after the water baptism, you know, for, for many, you know. Mark 1, 10, 11, and straightway coming out the water, he saw the heavens open and the Ruach like a dove descending upon him, speaking of Yahshua, and there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Acts 1, 1 through 5, the former treaties have I made of Theophilus, of all that Yahushua began to both do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Ruach Kadesh, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. You know, he had given what? After he, through the Ruach Kadesh, had given commandments unto the apostles. Who are we talking about? All of all that Yahushua began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Ruach Kadesh had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And people say Yahushua didn't give no commandments. That's a side note. Say that. Verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Elohim. And he being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For yoke and I truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with Ruach Kadesh not many days hence. You know, and so... There's a baptism of water and there's a baptism of spirit. And you see that. Acts 2, 36, you know, through 38. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Elohim have made that same Yahushua whom ye have crucified, both Adonai and Messiah. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift 
of Rock Kadesh. You know, so the number one thing that you have to do, you know, is you know, you have to find someone preaching the gospel and then you have to repent. You have to believe the gospel, repent, repent and be baptized. And then, you know, at some point receive the gift of the Ruach. Acts 10, 44 through 48. You know, this is speaking about the Gentiles here, Cornelius and his and his um, crew. That's while Peter said spake while Peter said spake these words, Ruach Kadesh fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came to Peter, because that on the Gentiles also were poured out the gift of Ruach Kadesh. You know, uh, Ruach HaKadesh, uh, verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify Elohim. Then answered uh, Kephas, or Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received Ruach HaKadesh as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Adonai. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. You know, so this is the way of Yahuwah. You know, you have to be baptized in water. Then at some point, you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the way of Elohim is the same for everyone. And I want you all to know that Israel of today is not being asked to do anything that Israel of old didn't do. Hence we read concerning Israel of old in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moshe in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Mashiach. So the first thing we need to do is believe the gospel of the kingdom. Well, find someone that's preaching it first, so that you can hear it, then believe it. Secondly, we need to repent and confess you know, our sinful ways. Thirdly, we need to accept Yahushua as our Adonai and Savior and be baptized in his name. Now, when we're baptized in the name of Yahushua, that is not just speaking of being baptized in a phonetic sound, you know, in the name of Yahushua or in the name of Yahshua or in the name of Jesus or, or whatever name you choose. It's not speaking about the phonetic sound. It's speaking about the character, authority, and reputation. You know, when you're baptized into his name, you're baptized into his character, authority, and reputation. You know, baptism speaks of being overwhelmed, i.e. being fully immersed and remaining fully immersed uh, until permanent change takes place. And it also can speak to identification because once you remain until a permanent change takes place, you now will be identified with that merger, that merger with the water. And that water is the water of the word. Fourthly, we need to receive the baptism of the Ruach HaKadosh. So, what happens next? After that is the wilderness experience. We all have to go through the wilderness experience because this is the way of Yahuwah. You know, it's a very pivotal part. This is the way of Yahuwah. We have to travel this way. This is why when we see Yahshua, you know, when he received the, um, the Spirit, the Spirit led him into the wilderness. He had to have to be tempted of the devil. We have to go through this. We have to have our wilderness experience. Mark 1, 11 through 13, and there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Ruach driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast. And the angels ministered unto him. You know, so if he did it, we have to do it. We can't skip the wilderness. 1 Corinthians 10, 5 through 12, but with many of them, Elohim was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. 
Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Mashiach, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whose ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that think of he stand of take heed lest he fall. See, everything they went through is an example unto us. If they went through it, we have to go through it. This is our example. This is how we know what to do. This is how we know what to expect. This is our tomorrow's newspaper. We just need to understand it. Exodus 20, verses 33 through 38. As I live, saith the Adonai Yahuwah, surely with a mighty hand and a, with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out urn with fury poured out and I will bring you into the, the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Mizraim. So will I plead with you, saith the Adonai Yahuwah, and I will cause you to pass under the rod and bring you into the bond of the covenant and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the country wherewith they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. See, now, once we get into the wilderness, at some point we have to enter into covenant with Elohim, even as Israel, who's our example, had to enter into covenant with Elohim as well. You know, we go out into this wilderness experience. For us, we're in a spiritual wilderness, as it's being spoken of here in Ezekiel, you know, a wilderness of people. This is why you can be in a, you follow Yah, and even though you're surrounded by people, you still feel lonely. So hereby we learn that the spiritual wilderness we've been placed in is a wilderness of people. This is where our tests and trials take place. Even within the midst of people or the world that surround us, this is where Yah will allow Satan to tempt us. We have examples of all that will happen in the scriptures. So we will, uh, so when we overcome it, when we succumb to the pressures of the wilderness, as physical Israel did, we have where their shortcomings. We have their examples. We have what we can expect. So we should overcome. There's no reason we shouldn't pass the test. Amen? The wilderness experience is first and foremost about leaving the way of the world that you're used to. You know, when, you, when they came out of Misraim, all they knew was Misraim. So this is a picture of them leaving the way of the world that they were used to in exchange for the way of Elohim in which you must learn. So, when you embark upon the way of Yahuwah, it should look quite a bit different than what you're used to. It look, should look completely different, even as the wilderness looked completely different from Mitzrayim or from Egypt. Please understand, if... your traveling the way looks the same as when you was... Looks the same as when you were in Misraim or, you know, as before you gave your life to Yah, then you're doing something wrong. It's not supposed to look the same. It's not supposed to feel the same. It's not supposed to be the same in no type of way. You know, you know, they were baptized. We were baptized, you know, and these what they went through is for our examples. You know, even as we read in 1 Corinthians 10, you know, therefore, very there for our warnings. You know, so we're to learn from them. We have to travel the same way. 
I know you may be thinking, but why? Why we gotta go through all this? Why? Because we need conversion. We need conversion. We need to be converted from the people of the world that we all were when we first learned about Yah unto what Yah wants us to be. Matthew 18, 1 through 6 says, At the same time came the disciples unto Yahushua, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahushua called a little child unto him and said it, in the, and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive such one such little child in my name, receive of me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the death of the sea. You know, also consider Acts 3, 19 through 21. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Adonai, he shall send Yahushua Mashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which Elohim has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. You know, so you have to understand, like, we have to be converted. You know, we have to repent now and begin to sin no more. You know, James 5, 19 teaches us, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and want to convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. I'm sure somebody has some sins they need, they need to um, cover up. This is a great way to do it. You know, we have to become as little children. We have to Cease from being grown and come become as little children again. And there's only one way that we can do that in our essence. Exodus 5, 1, and after it, Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. You know, we're supposed to be doing Yah's more deen in the way. Exodus 7, 16, And thou shalt say unto him, Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews have sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. We're supposed to be serving Yah while we're in the way. Exodus 8, 27, we will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yahuwah our Elohim as he shall command us. We should be sacrificing to Yah while we're in his way. Deuteronomy 8, 1 and 2, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go, into, go in and possess the land which Yahuwah swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which Yahuwah thy Elohim led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. We should allow Yah's way to humble us and to prove us so that he can see our hearts are pure and that we will keep his commandments. Joshua 5, 2-4 at that time Yahuwah said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel a second time. And Joshua made them sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Israel were males. Even all the men of war died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Israel. It's a whole lot of dying that takes place in the way of Yahuwah. Romans 2, 28 and 29, For he is not a Yahudim that is one outwardly, neither 
is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but here is the Yahudim which is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart in the Ruach and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of Elohim. You know, we have to have our hearts circumcised. We have to enter into covenant with Elohim and have our hearts circumcised. Deuteronomy 36 through 8, and Yahuwah thy Elohim will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed, to love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live, and Yahuwah thy Elohim will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and upon them that hate thee, which persecuted thee, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahuwah and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. You know, and this is the primary reason for the wilderness experience. You know, even that we might be reborn, you know, reborn as those little children. You know, so hence Romans 12, 2 teaches, it says, and do not be conformed of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. You know, and this is what the wilderness experience does for us. It causes us not to be conformed to this world. So, in summary, you know, I know some of you may be thinking you just need the main ideas. So, this is the main idea. We want to travel the way of Yahoo. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to Elohim must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So not only must we travel the way of Yahuwah, we must believe that Yahuwah exists first and foremost, and we must seek him with all our heart. You know, And if we're seeking him, we'll travel the way because the way leads to him. And so we have to travel it with all our hearts, with everything that's within us. You know, and we have an example. We have someone to follow. We have our Messiah, Yahushua. He is the way. We're to do as he did. In those days, Yochanan the Baptist came saying, Repent, for the kingdom of, uh, of heaven is near. And Yahshua went to him. That was one of the first things, that's the first thing he did that we read about, you know, Yahshua first went to him, and so we're to do likewise. We need to find a preacher that's confessing and praising Yah, who's in the wilderness, preaching the gospel, you know, someone such as myself, because <coughs> that's what I'm doing now, preaching about the gospel, you know, and be baptized, you know, not just dipped in the water. But you have to allow them to truly baptize you, you know. Now, the time is fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. So, before you get baptized, you should probably believe the gospel, though. You know, and then be baptized. You know, <clears throat> repent first, and then be baptized. You know, so Yokanan baptizes Yahushua. I don't know if they look like this at all. You know, but the picture was pretty revelatory. So yeah, I figured you would figure out who's who. You know. Next Yahushua got baptized in the water. So first he, he went and found his, his preacher, his preacher man, someone that confessed Yah and and, sell, and um praised Yah. You know, and had the gift of Yah, and he was out there in the wilderness, and he was preaching the gospel. He found him, you know, and he went and got baptized by him. You know, now take note that no one, not even Yahushua, baptized themselves. But you have many people today that seek to do just that. They seek to baptize themselves. That is, they seek. To put themselves in the water and hold themselves under water and bring themselves up. But you can't do that. That wasn't the way. 
You see, the water represents the word. We read in Ephesians 5.26, it says, the washing of water by the word. You know, and it speaks about what the water does. It sanctifies and it cleanses. You know, so this is what the preacher does. He takes you into the water. He takes you into the word. He fully submerse you into the word. He holds you down in the word. And he brings you up when he see you're changed by the word. Not before. See, but so many people today, they want to wash themselves. They want to baptize themselves. They want to teach themselves. But this is not the way that Yahshua did. This is not the way that anyone in Scripture does. So it shouldn't be the way we do it. Everyone else went through Scripture. So why would we start doing our own thing? That's what got the people in trouble throughout Scripture. Doing their own thing and not doing what Scripture dictated. So Yahushua's narrow path to salvation is simply a travel through the word of Elohim because Yahshua is the word of Elohim. Even as Yochanan 1, 1 through 3 teaches us, in the beginning was the word, the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. He was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Every time you read your word, every time you do something about the word, you're doing Yahshua. Every time you follow the word, you're following Yahshua. But you have to follow him in context. You have to follow him the way that he wants you to. You can't do it your way. So yes, there must be baptism. You know, you have to, you have to be baptized. You have to find someone to baptize you. You have to find someone to lead you into the water of the word, to immerse you in the water of the word, and to bring you up out of the water of the word. Because when you come out, then you're going to be led by the spirit and tempted of the devil. You have to go into your wilderness experience. At some point while in the wilderness, you're going to have to covenant with Elohim. And at some point, you're going to have to receive Barak Kadesh. Yahshua received it as soon as he came up out of his baptism. Israel received it when Yah called the elders up on the mountain and took the spirit of Moshe and put it upon the elders. Yeah, he was, in fact, putting it upon Israel. They were the elders of Israel that represented all of Israel. The wilderness experience brings about death via Yah. Just about every death you read about in the wilderness, Yah caused it. You know, take note, even when they battled against the Amalekites, you don't read about anybody dying. Not to say that they didn't, but you don't read about it. Why do you think that is? Even when they refused to go into the promised land and then they decided to go at the last minute and, and they got chased by their enemies as bees do, chase, chase their um, enemies. It never tells us anybody died. Now surely somebody probably did, but we're not told anybody died. Why do you think that is? Every time we read about somebody dying in the wilderness, it's because Yah did it. Now what kind of message is that giving? 
Your wilderness experience brings about death. And that's exactly what it's supposed to bring about. Death via Yah. But remember, it's a test, only a test. And we pass it with obedience. We can pass the test. It's an open book final exam. All you have to do is read the book. And do what the book say. And you can pass the test. But I'll tell you. It's much like what Yahshua said in Matthew 6, 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. The wilderness experience is much like this. This is how you pass it. You have to be willing to let yourself die. That old man that came out of Mitzrayim, that man of the world, that man with the knowledge of the world, that man with the knowledge of the letter of the word, that man has to die. You have to allow him to die in the wilderness. Your original man, the original you, has to die. That's the picture that the wilderness paints for us. And if you make it into the wilderness, that original man will die. It's going to die one way or another. It's best if you don't try to save it. Because if you try to save that original person that came into the wilderness, going to die anyway and you're going to die with him. Please understand those who seek to save their lives shall lose them and those who lose them for Yah's name's sake shall find them. Now it's a flip side to the coin because the wilderness experience can, can not, not will but can also bring about new life. See, because it's in the wilderness that you're fathered from above. It's in the wilderness that you're born again. It's in the wilderness that you become a new creature. If you allow the original person to die. The original one that came into the wilderness, they have to die. But if you let them die, Yah will bring about new life. He will cause you to be fathered from above. You know, as it was with Yahushua, those who pass this test will find a new life that awaits them in the kingdom of Elohim. But this new life will be a life of ministry. Even as when Yahshua came out of the wilderness, it wasn't until he came out of the wilderness that he began his, his, his ministry. It wasn't until Israel of old came out of the wilderness that they began their ministry. What was Israel of old? What was their ministry? To take the land. Their ministry was to evict the inhabitants of the land. Well, who were they doing that for? They was doing it for Yah. At Yah's command. Now they benefited from it. But that was Yah's command. They were doing ministry. And if you want to know what your ministry is, get born again. Because until then, your ministry is to die in the wilderness. Because you can't help Yah the way that you are. You can't help Yah the way that the world has made you. You can only help Yah after he has reformed you and fathered you from above and formed and shaped you into his son or daughter. Then you can help him. Until then, he's going to be killing you out there in the wilderness. My advice is to let him. Stop fighting them. And if you do, then one day you may find yourself in Zion. One day you may find yourself living in the kingdom of Elohim. One day you may find yourself 
you know, embarked upon the ministry of Elohim within his kingdom. And that's the overall goal, is it not? That's all I have for you. Praise God.